right? I'm going to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shah, Ba'ashem, Rechak Kodash, which is the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, okay? I would like to give double honors to the Elder Apostles and the Elders of Great Millstone, or GMS. And I would also like to say peace and blessings unto the elect, okay, of the nation of Israel, okay? Because that's what this is all about, edifying the elect, okay? And on today's lesson, all right, I'd like to go into angels, all right? And uh, basically what prompted this lesson was um, Elder Apostle Tahar, Elder Apostle Gabor's lessons, uh, dealing with the seven vows, okay? Going in, you know, speaking about the angels that poured out the plagues, okay? Because there's a big misconception about angels, all right? And this, as you see the picture on the screen, which I took this picture, all right? Um, it says, please be an angel and don't smoke. This was posted up in a, a restroom, okay? So as you see, the misconception right here, which is really no more than Edomite supremacy, okay? Not white supremacy, okay, but Edomite supremacy, all right? You see the angel, nice little soft, you know, almost look like the tissue angel, uh, angel soft tissue, okay? Let me open these doors, it's a lot of echo. Um, so yes there's been a big whitewashing so called okay uh, of, of what angels uh, actually look like their continents okay and um, the spirit that they come in okay cause when people think of angels they think of these little really these little cupids okay these little half naked babies floating around strumming harps you know harp strings and you know pouring out honey and always smiling blonde hair blue eyes as you see on the screen okay this is the total opposite of what angels appear as okay and i've got a a few scriptures that i would like to go into uh, dealing with angels okay because when the angels of the Lord return with our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai it's not going to be nothing nice okay that's going to be part of that strangeness okay so without further ado let's get some scriptures on it alright and I'd like to start off in the book this is in the Apocrypha all right, <clears throat> the history of Susanna. All right, and when you read this account, okay, there were two wicked judges lusting after uh, uh, Susanna, who was married to uh, Joachim, if I'm if I'm saying it uh, right, okay, and um, she was in the garden. She had sent out her servants, okay, because she wanted to wash herself. It, you know, it was a hot day. So she had sent out her maids, you know, to fetch a few things. And um, and these two wicked judges of Israel, okay, who were corrupted, you know, lusting in their minds after her, you know, um, laid hold on her, okay. And she, you know, she put her faith in the Lord and cried out as a woman that's married is supposed to, okay. And had put her full tr trust in the Lord that she would, you know, come out on the good end of the situation because they told her if she didn't lay with, uh, lay with them, uh, these two elders, okay, that uh, they would bear false witness against her, okay, and that she would be put to death, okay. So she put her trust in the Lord and cried out. Okay, <clears throat> and um, at the end of the account, 
you know, Daniel, the spirit of the Lord was placed upon Daniel, okay, to judge the matter correctly, okay, and she came, she, it was found that she was innocent, okay, so I'm going to get to the end of the story, which is a, a beautiful story, a beautiful account of uh, something that happened in our history, okay, and um, when you read it, you know, it's, it's better to read the whole thing, which for the sake of time, I'm not going to read the whole thing, and it's just one chapter, you know, I think it may have taken me 10 minutes to read it, you know, go back over it, okay, and, uh, but I'm going to jump to verse, um, hmm, let me see. I'm going to go to verse 54, okay, just to get to the point and then get some other scriptures dealing with angels, okay, and the misconception that's been put out there and give the true, and give a true understanding according to the scriptures how angels truly are, all right, so this is the uh, history of Susanna, which is in the Apocrypha, all right, after the song of the three holy children and uh, in between that account and the history of the destruction all right of Baal and the dragon all right in the apocrypha all right so this is the history of Susanna verse 54 it says now then if thou hast seen her okay because this is right here in this point Daniel is doing something like what they do today in uh like when you go to jail say you and your partner commit a crime okay and they, uh, the detectives take you and they interrogate you. They don't interrogate the suspects together. They want one to give an account and hopefully, you know, they'll trick them up. Okay, you said this, he said that, y'all stories ain't matching, okay? And I s strongly suggest that anybody that may be listening to this lesson go and read this uh, account, all right? As a matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 52 just to go with what, you know, okay. So this is, um, I'll start at 51. This is the history of Susanna, verse 51. Then said Daniel unto them, put these two aside, one far from another, and I will examine them. So he's going to cross-examine them like what they call it today, okay? The two, uh, the two uh, elders that bear false witness against Susanna, all right? It says, so when they were put asunder one from another, he called one of them and said unto him, O thou that art waxen old in wickedness, now thy sins which thou hast committed aforetime are come to light. For thou hast pronounced false judgment and hast condemned the innocent and hast let the guilty go free. Albeit the Lord said, The innocent and righteous shall not, shalt thou not slay. Okay, and that's according to the Lord. You, we're not supposed to, that's wicked, man. Okay, it says, Now then, if thou hast seen her, talking about Susanna, tell me, under what tree sawest thou them com, com, company together? All right, who answered under a maystack tree? Okay, so he's giving his account where he saw this act taking place because they bear false witness against her saying that she was lying with a uh laying with laying with a, a young man okay in the garden so he's asking well where did you see this take place and he's saying under a maystack tree so verse 55 it says and daniel said very well thou hast lied against thine own head for even now the angel of the heavenly father had received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. Read this one more time because you look at the little angel on this picture and think about what's being said right here. It says, And Daniel said very well, Thou hast lied against thine own head. For even now the angel of God had received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. Now, do that look like this little picture on the screen? Does that look like that that could actually execute this sentence from the Heavenly Father? Of course not. Okay? 
But again, this is Edomite supremacy, okay? Because as we know, the book of Job 9 and 24, the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, okay? So of course they're going to put their images and their likenesses out, okay? The angels, if well, if the angels look like this, then the son of the heavenly father must look like this and the, the heavenly father himself, okay? And I did a lesson about a year or so ago on the golden record that's on, uh, that they sent out on the Voyager into space, okay? And on that record, there's a, a man and a woman to show, you know, what the people of Earth look like in case aliens encounter it, okay? And it's a naked white man and a naked white lady, okay? That's also Edomite supremacy, okay? They've covered this Earth in lies, okay? And that's to say, you know, they are the only race of people. They are the supreme race of people, rather. Okay? Then when you, on that record, you know you have Jake's that have their songs by Jake on there. Okay? And you think these two made this song? These rhythmless? No. Okay, but let me go on. Okay, so we can get these scriptures and, you know, not, not to go too long. Because, you know, Jake has a short attention span. So... Again, the history of Susanna, verse 55, and Daniel said very well, Thou hast lied against thine own head, for even now the angel of God hath received the sentence of God to cut thee in two. So he put him aside and commanded to bring the other, and said unto him, O thou seed of Canaan, and not of Judah, okay, beauty hath deceived thee, and lust hath perverted thine heart. Thus have ye dealt with the daughters of Israel, and they, for fear, companied with you. But the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. She wasn't with it. She put her trust in the Lord, man. And she cried out as she's supposed to. Okay, that was a righteous thing. Okay, now therefore tell me, uh, and you can find that, when you go back into, I uh, believe, let me see, real quick, just to give it, and then I'll move on. I think this is it right here. Yeah, when you read in Deuteronomy, the 22nd chapter, uh, starting at the 22nd verse, um, on down you can read about the woman is supposed to cry out if she's married if, if men try to take hold or if a man tries to take hold on her okay but um, let me go back here uh, and this is back in verse uh, 57 it says thus uh, no um, verse 50 yeah verse I'll read verse 57 it says thus have you dealt with the daughters of Israel and they for fear com company with you, but the daughter of Judah would not abide your wickedness. Okay, because that was wicked. They were lusting after a married woman and, and told each other their lust and they went to, to lay, hand, lay hold of her. Okay, it's verse 58. It says, now therefore tell me, under what tree didst thou take them companying together? Who answered, under a home tree. Okay, so one said a may stick may stick tree and the other one said a home tree so it's obviously it's obvious they were lying all right so this is the point then said daniel unto him well thou hast also lied against thine own head for the angel of god waited with the sword to cut thee in two that he may destroy you okay so that's an angel, okay? The angel was it, it was ready to cut cut him in two, man, okay? To destroy him for being wicked, okay? To execute the judgment of the Lord, man, okay? So that don't match what's on the screen, okay? So let's get another scripture, and I'm not going to go all into it, but um, this is out of the book of Judges. All right. And these are some of the 
<laughs> first scriptures we learned coming into this thing, man. You know. Uh, and this is Judges 13 and verse uh, 6. Okay. Um, I'll read the heading. It says, Israel serves the Philistines 40 years. An angel appears to Manoah's wife. All right. The angel appears to Manoah. Okay. So the angel is making his appearance. Okay. And in verse 6, in Judges 13 and 6, let's see. It says, then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of the Heavenly Father. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. Okay? So, it was very terrible, man. Terrible don't mean no good thing, man. Okay? Very scary. Very terrible. If an angel was to walk in here right now, I'd probably pass out, man. Okay? And people are going to drop dead with fear when they see the angels, when they, the, the heavenly hosts. Okay? And the word host means armies. Okay? The Lord is, he has a host, man. The Lord of hosts. Okay? The Lord of armies, okay? And that's how our Lord and Savior is returning, with the heavenly host, okay? Um, no matter of fact, Elder Apostle Gabor had brought it out, and I didn't have this wrote down, but in um, 2nd Esdras, the 13th chapter, um, and I'll just read it right quick, 2nd uh, Esdras 13, and it came to pass that after seven days I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the ways there, all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong, and as the apostle said, that that's talking about Yahweh Shah. It says that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. What are the thousands of heaven? The heavenly host, man. The angels. Okay? And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. So, I mean, there you have it, man. Okay? And I could go on, but for the sake of time, I'm going to just go back and I'm going to get another account. And it's the book of St. Matthew. Chapter 28, let's see, starting in verse 1, all right, and I'll read the head, okay? It says, Yahweh Shai's resurrection declared, okay? And uh, I'll start at verse 1, it says, is, let me see, yeah, I'll just start at verse 1, because it's, the point is in, uh, well, I'll get it. This is St. Matthew 28 and 1. It says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the, the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher, okay, where the Lord was laid to rest. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. Okay, and as a matter of fact, it got all kind of precepts in here, but um, I got this precept from Judges 13 and 6. This was in that, uh, it was a precept in that uh, chapter. Okay. And verse 4 says, And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Yahweh Shai, which was crucified. So when the angel came, it was a great earthquake. Okay. He rolled back the stone. All right. And verse 4 says, And for fear of him, the keepers did shake 
and became as dead men. Now, would you be scared of this little fluffy, little non-threatening looking Edomite on the screen? Of course not, man. Nothing to be feared with that, a little blue-eyed, blonde-haired <laughs> devil, <laughs> you know? That's nothing to look upon and be, be afraid of, other than the lies that come with it, okay? So let's get, get another scripture, all right? And this scripture links up with Daniel, the 12th chapter, I mean with uh, Revelation, the 12th chapter. And this is Daniel, the book of Daniel. I can get there. Chapter 12 and 1. It says, and at that time shall Michael, okay, Michael is one of the archangels, man, stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, talking about Israel, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay? Now, when Michael rises up, it's going to be to fight. Okay? And believe you me, he don't look nothing like this. Okay? So let's jump over to Revelation 12. Okay. And if the Spirit say the same, we'll end it here. Okay. Um, let's see where it is. 12 and 7. It says, and there was a war in heaven. What's going on in a war, man? Bloodshed, carnage, being, hey man, bodies being just torn to pieces, burned up, stabbed, etc. Bloodshed, okay? Nothing, no fun, okay? It says, uh, Revelation 12 and 7, and there was a, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels okay so there's going to be a war in the sky man there's going to be war here on earth man okay esau and and the other nations are going to try to fight against um the lord and his angels man to no prevail okay but the point is that michael and the other angels they're going to be fighting, okay? So there's been a big misconception about angels, all right? And that's pretty much the point, you know, just to say, because I was going to actually do a lesson on white supremacy, you know, and going to all of that, and I was like, man, this is really kind of all tied together, you know? But these images being put out there, okay, to blind our people, all right, to keep them further asleep. Okay, so, you know, this was rough and raw because I kind of, you know, it was kind of raw, you know, because uh, I just put this all together once I got uh, settled. Okay, but uh, nonetheless, you know, Lord willing, there was edification in this lesson. Okay, so don't believe the hype, man. Okay, angels are to be feared. Okay. They 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 gonna come back and fight, man. When the angels come back with the Lord, they're going to fight. Okay, there's gonna be much bloodshed. Okay, and they coming back in so-called UFOs, which are the chariots of the heavenly Father, man. All right. So again, Lord willing, there was edification in this lesson. All right, and uh, I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory again to the heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. By Shamra Kakradash and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and GMS. And I want to say peace and blessings unto the elect. We almost out of here. All right. 144,000, man. All right. Shalom.